your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The month of March is recognized annually as Social Workers Month. Yesterday, social workers gathering to introduce for the first time the Bahamas Social Workers Association that will represent topical issues for those in the field and the community at large. Azure Quant was there. It's an exciting day here at the Resilience Center as social workers gather for the first time to introduce the Bahamas Social Workers Association. They say that this is only the beginning and the time is now. Assistant professor from the University of the Bahamas, Dr. Andy Lang, says that the organization is official and they can now bargain on behalf of all social workers across the Bahamas, whether employed, retired, or a student. Focusing on the significance of the move, he says social workers touch the lives of many every day. Social workers continue to play a pivotal role um, in helping people to adjust and cope, especially as the Bahamas grapples with issues such as economic decline, the aftermath of natural disasters, and the impact of social ills. Dr. Lang says it is now critical that they host a nationwide election to begin establishing presence in the community as a powerful and formidable force. It is crucial that we move with great haste to begin addressing many of the issues that have plagued us as a group of social workers even from before our ratification. These issues pertain to salary disparities, delays in hiring, regularization, title protection, licensure, and the crafting of protocols relating to many of the social ills impacting our country. Former Deputy Director at the Department of Social Services, Paula Marshall, extending congratulations to the team while giving her views on the importance of the association. It's important that social workers uh, make it clear to both the government and to the country how important their role is in the outworking of all the government's plans and for the um, benefit of all the people in the country because we have played such an, a vital role that is really not well understood or accepted or given the credit for. Now they are encouraging all social workers to be a part of the association as it will be beneficial not only for them but for the community. From ZNS News, I'm Azure Quant. Social workers across the island say this is the right time for an association to be formed to protect their interest. They say it is something grand for the profession. Tonight, we have their reactions. This is a great time. It's Social Workers Month. And so I'm so excited that social workers are finally getting the recognition that they deserve. Wow, red letter day indeed. Um, this is something that um, my colleagues and I, we have been talking about for a while. I, I am lost for words. I am elated today because we've worked so hard for this association and now it's finally here. Minnis and Roel Cooper say that they have been waiting for an association like this for a long time. When asked what can be done to enhance the profession, they had this to say. Social work now in the Bahamas is looking like a dying profession. And so for me, personally, recruitment, you know, bringing the profession to light. Um, bringing social work back to our communities, let pers letting persons know that there is help and hope. And social workers are indeed here to bring that help and hope to our community. This is definitely important because when it is that we would have um, decided to become, when I decided to become a social worker, I wanted to be in a profession that helped people and that was respected um, and that we are doing our due diligence so now hopefully others will be able to see and we are able to impact our community in a, at a much wider scale. Now they say the profession has been overlooked for many years but they say social workers must unite. In other news, some high school students will soon be afforded the chance to complete their tertiary studies earlier than expected, thanks to a program which will allow the students to begin studying for college while still in high school. We have a report. 
It is a golden opportunity for high school students to jumpstart their tertiary studies. Principal at Tabernacle Baptist Christian Academy, Ashel Bain, explains. We have always been in partnership with Aaliyah Pinder, um, Your Faith. Um, she helps students get scholarships or even just try to help them get off to school, help parents who don't know what they need to do to get their kids off to school. So Aaliyah is in partnership with the College of Biblical Studies, Houston Baptist, and a college also in Indianapolis, Southern Indian Indianapolis. Um, they are providing free a free college experience virtually to students from 9th to 12th grade. Um, they can do these classes during school, depending on what the school wants, or they can do it after school. Now the courses are accredited and credits are transferable. Bain says basic college courses are being offered. They can also finish while in high school. They can get their associate degree. Um, by I guess thinking like six credit semesters and if they finish while they're graduating getting their high school diploma they can get their associate's degree as well and I guess if they work hard enough they can also work towards getting their bachelor's. She says there have been students in the past who have participated in similar studies and have done well. I think the advantages of this is for parents you don't have to worry about um, women board you don't, of course, you still will have to get the books or whatever is needed. And if it's virtual, I most I believe that it is, the books will be online virtually. And it saves a lot of money. And I know in this time right now, a lot of parents don't have it. And I'm sure they could find $275 more than finding $20,000 or $30,000. So it makes it so much more affordable for the parents. And at least the kids are home. You know, so you don't have to worry, worry about room and board. Room and board is more expensive than the actual college classes. So. She adds that a team is also in place to assist those students who may be struggling in their courses. So they can actually go online and get help for whatever courses they may be in. If they're doing chemistry and they stuck, they can contact somebody at the college and they would help them with after school help. Just like in high school, it's, it's not as difficult or as hard as you may think it is. It's quite simple, quite easy, and I think it's best for students while they're in the mode of studying and teaching, I mean, and learning in school, in high school, if they could get the college college in there at the same time, then I think they should take advantage of this. Bain says a number of students have already signed up for the courses and are looking forward to jump-starting their college studies. And now it is time for your Friday evening sports report with Jay Philippe. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to Sports Web Team Bahamas competing at the World Indoor Track and Field Championships. We also have a quarter signing that took place today, but let's start this one off with baseball at the YMCA. Legacy Baseball at the YMCA Field is back. President of the league, Sonia Knowles, says she's excited to see the kids back on the field. Moving forward, we're trying to get some games in. The real mission in this is to get more kids to come out and learn how to play the sports of baseball. We allow kids to come out from age 4 to age 16. We allow the girls to come out from 4 years old to age 9, and then at that age, they move over to softball at age 10. This year's league has quite a number of age groups. We play on Saturdays from 10 to 12. We have a t-ball team, which is from ages 4 to 6. We have a coach pitch team from age 7 to 8. We have a 9-10 team. We have a 12U, a 14U, and a 16U. Switching gears now in hoops, former Tabernacle standout basketball player Ramad Dean is home in Freeport, where a college signing ceremony took place at the Tabernacle School. Dean thanked his family, coaches, friends, and mentors at home before making his announcement. You guys have always been there for me and supported me from day one. I want to thank them for always believing in me and always telling me that I can do it, even though it may seem impossible sometimes to me as a kid. Also, I want to thank the Fisher family, the family who I had back in Canada for taking me in as their son and brother, making me feel as I, I was a Fisher too. And now it was time for the six foot six forward to make his commitment as to where he would be taking his talents. The college I've decided to commit it to is Fort Ham University. 
And finally, in sports team, Bahamas five-member team is currently in Serbia competing at the World Indoor Track and Field Championships. Sean Emil Uibo has advanced to the 400 meter finals in a time of 51.38, which is the third fastest qualifying time. Also, Antonique Strong took part in the 60 meter dash, where she made the semi-finals for her time of 7.17 seconds, which is a new personal best was not enough to advance to the finals. And that's a quick check on sports, ladies and gents. I'm Jay Philippe. Have a great weekend.